This is a very strong warning to the false prophets who preach super abundant grace without explaining things for those who pervert the scriptures. As the Spirit leads me, I'm going to address the dangers of teachings of super abundant grace, why we should not abuse it. Shall we try uh, our best to live lives, you know, pleasing to God? And if we do that, are we going to be under a curse? Because that's what one false prophet said. And what's the difference between the law and good works? Like works of righteousness, is it the same? And I'm going to address this matter. What means to worship the Lord? Because some false prophets and God actually has ordained me to speak against the false prophets and against the false teachings. So one false prophet said that God is not pleased with worship, but only with faith. So I'm going to give you explanation of what means to worship the Lord so as you can judge for yourselves. So let's go first to read Romans. And I advise you to read the whole chapter by yourself. But... I will give you a few verses, not to waste your time. Romans 6, verse from 1 to 3. What shall we say? Should we continue to sin and practice sin as a habit so that grace may increase and overflow? Certainly not. How can we, the very ones who died to sin, continue to leave it in any longer? Or are we ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Let's go to verse 11. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin. You see, explanation says, and your relationship to it broken, but alive to God. In Jesus Christ. Number 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts and passions. Do not go on offering members of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but offer yourselves to God as those who are alive from dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin will no longer be a master over you, since you are not under law as slaves, but under grace. So grace is not made so as we can live in sin and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And God says the grace is sufficient. Actually, the grace was given us to overcome the sin and to live the holy life. Next one. When the, what then shall we conclude? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under God's grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that when you continually offer yourselves to someone to do his will, you are the slaves of the one whom you obey, are either slaves of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. Do you see that? Okay, number 23 verse. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So as we see, the Bible says, we should not sin, for the wages of sin is death. And we know that death is hell. Okay, let's go to Ephesians, uh, no, chapter number 4, 26, 27. The Bible says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. The Bible says, do not sin. Galatians, chapter 5, 
19:21. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing. Sorry for my English. And things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, let's go to Galatians uh, 6 verse 8. For the one who sows to his own flesh will reap from the flesh corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So clearly, the Bible says, do not sin. Or you will not go to heaven. Now, uh, next subject. You know, um, this matter of sin, a lot of people say, abundant grace, abundant grace, it is okay to sin. No, the Bible says no. The Bible says, be holy, for I am holy. God hates sin. And these scriptures should be enough for a person to understand the dangers of the sin. It says the wages of sin is death. It is that the, the, there is nothing clearly that you can read to explain where the sin leads. And the Bible is not for unbelievers. It's for those who believe in Christ. Okay. Next subject, shall we practice good deeds and shall we try to please God? Because a false prophet said, if you try to please God, you're going to be under curse because he put the law in, you know, he mixed it with good deeds and the works of righteousness. So let's go to the Bible and see the answer for ourselves. Romans 12 verse 1, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, well-pleasing to God, which is your rational act of worship. The Bible says real worship of God is not a singing and dancing. The real worship of God is to live a holy life, well-pleasing to God, and as a living sacrifice. So trust me, whoever tells you God is not pleased with, with worship, that is a lie. God is very, very pleased with, with worship. Because it is written, it's well-pleasing to God. Because the real worship is obedience to the word of God, is obedience to the Lord. Yep. Second um, Corinthians 5, 9. Therefore, we also have as our ambition whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. Again, the Bible says we shall be pleasing to him. Colossians 1.10 <clears throat> So that you will walk in a manner or worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing, fr bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Again, the Bible says we have to walk Worthy of God, not just in righteousness, in holiness, not just live in sacrifice, not just to be pleasing to God. We have to be worthy of God, to be pleasing to Him. Whoever says opposite, he's a liar. First Thessalonians 4, one. Finally then, brethren, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us instruction as to how you ought to walk and please God, that you excel still more. And the best one, finally, oh, Matthew 7, 21. Everyone knows that scripture. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. So, Jesus is saying, this is for the church. This is not for 
are atheists. This is not for non-believers because they do not call Jesus the Lord. This message is for the church, for the body of Christ, for those who call Jesus Lord. And he says, not one of all of you who says Lord, Lord, Lord will go, you know, will enter heaven. No. But only the, those who do the will of my father. And we see from the previous scriptures that I gave you, what is the will of God? To be well-pleasing to him, to walk on holiness, in righteousness, and not to sin. Okay, Matthew 5, 14, 16. Actually, my 5, 14, that's the scripture that God shows me all the time. He tells me, like I see this number, 5, 14, I see it everywhere. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bow. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is Jesus speaking. It's not apostle speaking. Is not anybody else speaking. This is God directly saying that we must do good deeds and other people shall see it and glorify the Father in heaven. So that was the second matter I wanted to address. God is a holy God. He hates sin. And under no circumstances we should say, I am going to live the way I want and if I want, like, I will live in sin and super abundant grace will cover it. We were given grace to overcome the sins, not to sin so the grace can cover it. 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verse from 9 to 10. But also I advise you to read the full chapter by yourself so as you know the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. Okay, let's go. So, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, no slanderers, no swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So the Bible says we are washed by the blood of Jesus from previous sins, from previous lives. And we died with Christ again. We became new creation again. So as we cannot, we cannot go on, you know, and do these things. We cannot. That's why... You know, we, the Bible says we have died and we rose again. We are new creation in Christ. Christians who live Christ-like life. Let's go to Hebrews 10, verse 26, 27. For if we go on sinning deliberately, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. If that doesn't scare you, then I don't know what's going to scare you. So I'm going to speak even more. There is danger when you sin. Danger not of eternal condemnation and your separation from God. As you live this life on this earth, sin opens the door to demons. I am a warrior in the spirit. Prayer warrior. I am the one from those people who release fire, fire, fire in the prayers. So I have seen demons. I have seen how the open doors look like. I literally saw the open doors and how demons go through that door. I have seen those doors in the spirit, how they look like. How demons enter into people's lives. Sin opens those doors. It does. Satan was the first one who sinned. 
So when you sin, and I'm talking about intentional sin, habitual sin, not sin, we, we are all sinners, right? We all sin. But we come to God and we ask for repentance and we ask God to take away that sin from us, to help us to overcome. But when you do it intentionally and you know it is bad and you don't ask to overcome it, you just say, it's okay, grace is sufficient, the door is open. Remember when people brought adulterous woman to Jesus, so as they can stone her to death, Jesus said, it's John 8, 11. He told to that woman, go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. Yes, they wanted to stone her to death. Jesus says, no, if any of you without sin, then stone her. Everybody sinned. No one stoned her. But he told that woman, go and sin no more. He forgave her. But then he said, as you have received me, sin no more. So now I'm going to explain something about demons and open doors. So live, as, as, as I told you, living in sin is like an open door of your house at night. Imagine situation. You have a wonderful, amazing house, which is your life, your soul. So what you do, you open the door at night, you live in very dangerous neighborhood. Imagine you go to the, imagine the worst uh, neighborhood you can imagine in your country and your house is there. You open the door in that neighborhood and I tell you why I give you example of the most dangerous neighborhood because the Bible says enemy comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. The Bible says that we live in the war. That Jesus calls Satan God of this world. We live in satanic world full of demons. So imagine the worst neighborhood. It is nighttime. You open the door. You switch on the light in your house. You leave the door open and you go to sleep. And that's it. Now think who will enter that door. You never know. What evil can come? Someone will come. And the enemy comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. How do you think people get demons inside them that they need to be casted out? How do you think people get sickness, cancers? Uh, it is a sin. Open door. Even sickness can come in your life and can kill you. Bad evil spirits can, can come and torment you because of the sin. Don't you know the Bible says Satan is an accuser of the brethren? Don't you know when you live in sin, even your prayers will not be answered? The Bible says in Psalm 103, Blessed be the God who forgives my iniquities and heals my diseases. First, iniquity must be forgiven. First, sin must be stopped. Because Satan, when imagine if you are sick and you're praying to God for healing, but there is an open door in your life and you keep sinning and keep living in sin and disobedience to God because disobedience is an act of witchcraft that is written in the Bible. So that's a sin. And then you pray to God for your healing and then the Satan will come. He will accuse you. I have been, I, I, I have seen that. This happened to me. When I was praying to God, and God said, that is accuser. Satan is accusing you. I had to repent <laughs> many, many times. And there are a lot of things that I had to let go in my life. And learn to live in obedience to God. So, yes, God, and, and the thing is, after, if, for example, you say, okay, okay, I'm not going to sin anymore. I'm going to come to God and ask for forgiveness. Guess what? God will forgive you, but the damage will be done. The damage will be done. The demon will be there. The sickness will be there. The enemy can bring even death. The trouble will be there, even though God will forgive you. So my advice to you, choose life, not death. Because sin leads to death. 
And the last matter that I want to address is the difference between the law and life, you know, of righteousness. To be pleasing to God. Because some false prophets mix it together in order to confuse people. So law is understood as God's law given to his people at Mount Sinai as the commandment of the Lord. It was given to Moses, the law. So the law was saying, do not sin, do not do this, do not do this. You know, it was giving a clear instruction. But law was given to reveal the sin. The Romans 3.20 says, For by law is the knowledge of sin. Now, we do not obey the law, but we live to be pleasing to the Lord. For there is none that could keep the law except Jesus. Even now, there is none who can live you know, without sin. We all sin. But there is always a line between unintentional sins because of our human nature, because the flesh is corrupt. So between, you know, unintentional sins and intentional sins. When you know you shouldn't do that, when you know God doesn't want you to do that, and you still do that, and you disobey God. So, <laughs> and there is one scripture that everyone is quoting and everyone is quoting only half of that scripture. We were given the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit help us to overcome sin, the desires to sin. He is the one who convicts our hearts and brings us to repentance. The goodness of God brings us to repentance and the Holy Spirit. So let's go to Romans 8.1. And all the false prophets, they, 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 they claim that scripture. They say, that is, for there is no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ. But that's only half of it. Let's keep reading. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Do you see what it says? There is no condemnation only to those who are after the spirit, not after the flesh. And before I read to you, the fruits of the, there are fruits of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and there are fruits, deeds of the flesh. And I, in Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21, you can go and see again. Here it says clearly, there is a condition to that. Condition. There is no condemnation in Christ only to those who walk after the Spirit. So you see, again, now the works of the flesh are evident. Galatians 5. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, all these things. Drunkenness, envy, anger, and other things. Jealousy, strife. Do you know that one of the sins is when you know you're supposed to do something and you don't do it, it is a sin as well. Not to do good, not to do right, that is a sin as well. Romans 8.8 8 says, those who are in the flesh, they cannot please God. 1 John 3.22 says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him. So you see, you see the Bible says, whatever we ask from God, we will receive. But there is condition. Because we keep his commandment and because we do what pleases him. Again, there is condition. But people like to quote only half of the scriptures. So do you remember now what I said about answered prayers? The Bible says in 1 John that we receive when we please him and keep his commandments. So many people have prayers and asking God, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. But they disobey God. They live in sin and they disobey the Lord. So the conclusion is, we need to live holy lives. We need to be pleasing to God and walk in obedience with Him. We need to live worthy of Him. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> None of it is from me. It's from the Bible. And we need to keep the doors closed to the demons by staying away from 
habitual sin. We need to do good works to please God and for others to see and glorify the Father in heaven. And then when you ask something from God, but you live in a life of wickedness, do not expect to receive it. Hmm. So whosoever is telling you otherwise against these words and against the scriptures, Take it for granted that person is a liar and a very evil person who doesn't care about you, who doesn't care about your family and your children. Again, I will say again, enemy comes to kill, to steal and to destroy. If you live in sin, the door is open, you will become a victim. Remember, Jesus says the path is very narrow that leads to life and only if you find it. It actually says in Matthew 7, 13, 14, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only few find it. There is a reason why Jesus said that. So if when, when a false prophet is teaching you, only grace, only what God has done. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to repent. You don't have to stay away from sin. You don't have to try to be pleasing to God. Let me tell you something. That person hates you. Because the enemy will come and he will steal from you. The enemy come, he will kill. And the enemy will come and he will destroy he will come into the marriages. He will destroy the marriages. He will destroy children. He will destroy health of people. He will destroy finances of people. He will destroy peace and happiness. Why? Because the door is open. And as you are sleeping at night, do you remember, um, do you remember scripture? Do you remember parable of the sower? Jesus was giving this parable. While man slept, enemy came and sowed, sowed a seed. Wheat and tares. You, the Bible says, be sober and vigilant. So when you are sober and vigilant, trust me, you're going to stay away from sin. You're going to stay away from evil. But... What means you are sleeping? It means you are, you know, living the life that you want to live, that your flesh wants to live. So you are sleeping. An enemy will come while you are sleeping. Please do not be deceived by evil people. Do not be deceived by those who use the name of Jesus Christ and use um, the Bible, you know, uh, the word of God for their own gain. Not everyone who says he's from God is actually from God. Not everyone who's prophesying is actually God's prophet. There are a lot of people that are prophets of Baal. And the, the, the purpose of deception is to deceive you. None of them will tell you, oh, I am prophet of Baal. Nobody will tell you that. I am a snake. I am a wolf. Only God can reveal to you. But a lot of people prefer to go to those channels and watch them instead of going to God and asking straight from God, is, that, is, is he of you? Because I did. There was one person I used to follow and I used to listen and I always had bad feeling about him. I always had doubts and in my spirit, I never wanted to watch his videos. And then I said, God, what's going on? Why I don't like him? Like, I, 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 I don't, I, I can hear what he's saying sometimes. And what God showed me, uh, it was shocking. He has like half a million subscribers and people trusting him. And he's not of God. I was looking at him, I saw snake in the spirit. May God give you wisdom. God bless you.